New and emerging technology is helping us address the climate and environmental crisis. Renewable solar, wind and hydropower, along with rechargeable batteries and electric vehicles, are reducing our dependence on fossil fuels, as well as storing and transporting energy more efficiently. But these high-tech solutions rely on a small number of technology-critical elements, called TCEs, whose production and disposal is linked to many environmental problems. Some scientists even warn that the production and disposal of these vital TCEs could be infringing on the nine planetary boundaries that keep planet Earth habitable. Mining, processing and transporting TCEs uses large amounts of energy, resulting in increased greenhouse gas emissions and pushing us further beyond the climate change planetary boundary. Vast open pit mines drive large-scale land use change, use gigantic quantities of fresh water and can pollute with arsenic, mercury and other toxic materials, harming biodiversity. Finally, the technology-critical elements themselves may become pollutants when released back into the environment as emissions or waste, transgressing the novel chemical entity's planetary boundary. So, can the technology-critical element supply chain become sustainable? To meet Paris Climate Agreement targets, global implementation of green technologies needs to ramp up substantially. And so too does the production of the technology-critical elements required to supply that growing demand. Those TCEs include metals like cobalt, lithium and tungsten, the platinum family of precious metals, and rare earth elements such as neodymium and scandium. To curb climate change, the world will need to increase solar energy generating capacity by more than 3,000% by 2050. To store all that energy, rechargeable battery capacity must increase more than 5,000%. This will require a huge surge in the production of TCEs, Demand for cobalt and lithium, for example, is expected to soar 500%. There are practical ways to satisfy this dramatic TCE demand while polluting less. Green mining technologies, for example, are making an environmentally damaging industry more sustainable by reducing reliance on fossil fuels and restricting toxic chemical use. The catch? These innovative techniques are extremely expensive, meaning that green mining is currently only profitable for very high quality ore deposits. Reducing overheads and expanding green mining will be an important step towards improving TCE sustainability. Most technology critical elements are relatively common in the Earth's crust, but they are rarely found in large deposits. Currently, Mines in just a handful of countries produce most TCEs, including Australia, Brazil, Chile, China, the Democratic Republic of Congo, South Africa and Russia. So TCE extraction impacts are concentrated mostly in developing nations, where environmental and health regulations are less stringent. Intense effort is now being focused on finding new sources of TCEs in the developed world with its tougher environmental rules. This could also reduce the TCEs transport footprint and make their supply chains more resilient. When we pull these elements out of the ground and use them in solar panels, batteries, cell phones, computers and other devices, we are introducing them to new environments with unknown consequences for the plants, animals and people exposed. Because TCEs are mostly used in trace amounts, we still know very little about their environmental and health impacts. 
we know that some TCEs are toxic at high concentrations. Thallium salts, for example, were once used to kill pests. And studies show that some platinum group metals and rare earth elements can build up in the tissues of living organisms. What we don't know is whether the critical elements that have been released so far from mining, vehicle emissions or waste are yet impacting ecosystems or what levels could be tolerated before ecosystem functions start to fail. Ultimately, to break free from the cycle of TCE mining, manufacture and waste, we need to find ways to recycle these valuable minerals. Unfortunately, that's challenging for TCEs, which are often used in very small quantities in computers and electronic equipment, embedded within a matrix of other materials like silicon, plastic and ceramics. Isolating these tiny amounts of metals before or after they enter landfills is extremely difficult, but researchers are developing new techniques. One example, known as phytomining, extracts valuable TCEs from waste or contaminated soil using specialised plants that accumulate metals inside their stems. Some experts hope solutions like these could make urban mining in landfills and garbage dumps a possibility in future. In certain products, such as rechargeable batteries and toxic emission-reducing catalytic converters in cars, critical elements like lithium and platinum are found in larger quantities, making dedicated recycling operations more promising. Already, one quarter of the world's supply of platinum group elements comes from recycled catalytic converters. But new technology will be needed to recycle and reuse lithium trapped in used batteries. Experts say changes at the product design stage could make a big impact, moving us toward a circular economy. Today, for example, most of our electronic devices are designed with planned obsolescence in mind. We're encouraged to replace them long before their maximum lifespan is reached. Also, companies make it extremely difficult to open up and repair broken devices. All this could change with smarter designs that make technology more durable, easier to repair and easier to break down into components. National policies and market incentives need to be implemented that encourage extended producer responsibility, requiring manufacturers to ensure their products are recycled. Scientists are also searching for TCE alternatives. For example, lithium in rechargeable batteries could one day be replaced by sodium, a much more abundant element. By mining TCEs with less pollution, replacing them where we can, extending the lifespan of high-tech products and developing new recycling techniques. The hope is that these technology-critical elements, so essential to tomorrow's net-zero carbon economy, can become as green as the climate solutions they're meant to serve. <laughs>